Hi everybody, Gene here. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, where every single week we answer the most common and uncommon questions about tapping and EFT, so you can get the most out of your tapping practice, eliminate self-sabotage, and take the action that you want. As a reminder, because of all that is going on in the world, I have been doing a special deal giving you 66% off one-on-one sessions with me. If you'd like some information about that, all you need to do is email me directly, gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqna.com, and I will get you the information. And I would love to be helpful as you navigate these troubled times with your tapping. And I actually had someone do this. I've been offering it for a while. You can actually do a little mini group session. So if you want to get two or three of your friends or loved ones together and we all tap together, the cost is exactly the same. And we can put as many people on the line as you would want. And we can just do some really amazing transformation and tapping together. Again, just drop me a note, Gene, G-E-N-E at tappingqna.com. This is Gene Montrose still and welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 454, originally aired May 6, 2020. Hi everyone, I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Today we're going to talk about and I'm going to share a little process with you on how you can clear unprocessed emotions from the past, especially when they show up in unexpected places. It's a really simple five-step process that once you hear it, it'll be easy to master and you can use it over and over again. Before I share that with you, I just want to give a big shout out to everybody who has been supporting the Tapping Q&A podcast. I really appreciate it. It allows us to have really high quality equipment and to be able to produce the podcast weekly the way that we are. If you'd like to support the podcast, all you need to do is go to tappingqna.com slash support. And everybody who has been a supporter of the podcast in the last couple of weeks received access to 279 tapping audios absolutely free. It is something that I offered to the list for sale, but all the supporters got it for free. So if you're one of the supporters and you did not get access to that package, just shoot me a note, gene, G-E-N-E at tappingqa.com. And if you'd like to be one of those amazing supporters so that we keep producing the show and you can get some amazing bonuses, tappingqa.com slash support. Recently, I was tapping with a client and we were tapping on the emotion of grief and the grief that she was experiencing was the grief of missing all of the things that we're missing right now in the world, getting to see people face to face, being in public, going to theater, being able to celebrate with loved ones. And because we are all keeping our distance to keep everyone around us safe, those opportunities are being missed. And oftentimes we don't think of that as grief. You know, we think of grief around really big things, the loss of a life, the ending of a relationship, the termination of a job. But we can feel grief for anything because grief is just the information of feeling disconnected from something that is important. And I was the other day just thinking about what it's going to be like. I'm here in New York City. So I have been basically in lockdown for eight weeks. Um, The last time I was able to be out in the world in a super social way was March 11th. And I love live theater. Uh, You know, it's, it's one of my favorite things about being in New York, from big Broadway musicals to tiny little black box plays. And the first time I sit in a theater with other humans, I just know I'm going to just ball through the entire thing. And it's it's just going to be such an emotional experience that just thinking of being back in a theater again, I can feel it catching in my throat because of those things that are being lost. And so it was really natural that she was feeling this sense of grief. And so what happens if you work with me, um, my clients know this, is after we do a round of tapping, the first question I always ask is, What did you notice? Not, did it work? Did it go up? Did it go down? Just what did you notice? And I like asking that sort of open-ended question of my clients because it gives them the opportunity to process the last three or four minutes of tapping. Because sometimes they notice new pieces of information. Sometimes they just notice relief. Sometimes they notice intensity going up and down. And so it's a nice question to process what has just happened to figure out what our next step is. And so as we were tapping on this grief, my client said, I noticed all of these other pools of grief. And what she was describing was the grief that was inside of her, that some was related to what was going on in the world, but wasn't the specific instance we were tapping on. 
And other parts were just grief that was hanging about from other places in her life that she never fully processed, that she was carrying with her. And it's not the end of the world to have unprocessed emotions, particularly if they're not impacting us day to day. But there is a bit of a burden to that. And emotions rhyme with each other. And what I mean by that is when I experience one emotion, I can have an experience that is similar to that. And it reminds me of it the way a rhyme reminds you of one thing and another because it's not exactly the same. And we can then experience the emotion from the thing that it reminds us of. And so on a sud scale, on a zero to 10 scale, I might be feeling four level of grief. But as it reminds me of other things that I'm lost, that I'm missing, that grief can go up pretty dramatically. And that makes this moment much harder because now I'm a managing the emotional state of a seven or eight or a nine when I started at a four. And as we were talking about this imagery of pools of grief, we got to the realization that in the tapping, what we were doing is we were actually breaking the walls between these different pools. Like I almost saw like these in my mind as she was describing it, these dirt holes, like a whole bunch of fishing holes that were right next to each other. And if you broke the little ground between the two of them, it was like a dam breaking and they merged. And since we were tapping on a particular issue, as we broke the walls of these other pools of grief and the grief from the other experiences to continue the metaphor poured into where we were, because we were tapping on this particular spot, we were getting a chance to release all of the grief that was joining the pool that we were in. And so, again, it's not an uncommon experience. I've never thought of it quite in that analogy as me and my client were processing through this to trying to figure this out, but it happens all the time that we will be tapping on one issue. And my client, when I ask the question, what did you notice? It's like, oh yeah, it really reminds me of the time when. Because oftentimes when we have experiences in, in, in my training from hypnosis, we used to talk about the initial sensitizing event and subsequent sensitizing events. So the first time we were triggered by something or impacted by something, and then every instant after that, which is reminding us of that original thing. So we're getting the emotion from the sum total of all of the previous events that are like this, that are not processed. So when this happens, I have a really simple five-step process that I like to go through. Um, I would encourage you to listen through this once. And if you want to go back and re-listen to it, just note these five things down. That would be a good, useful thing for you. But once you have a sense of these five steps and why we're doing them, it's going to be something that's really easy for you to do. And you're going to remember it pretty simply. So imagine that you are tapping and as you're tuning in, it reminds you of all of this extra past emotion. So the first thing, the first step is to simply acknowledge the past emotions. And it could be as simple as, as I'm tapping on whatever the issue is today, I'm also recognizing grief that is coming up from the past because of, and then if there are specific events, let's those specific events, or just grief that is showing up in the past. The second thing that we do is after acknowledging it, we acknowledge that it's not a bad thing that it showed up. Right now, the tapping, the tapping might look something like right now, I recognize the fact that all of these past emotions are coming up. And even though I wasn't thinking about them right now, this is the perfect opportunity for them to come forward. And my system wants me to experience them right now. Again, just acknowledging it. So we're not fighting the emotion because the last place I ever want to be is fighting the information that my system is bringing forward because we're working in concert to this. And even though it might feel like it's a distraction or it's coming out of a field, it's something for me to be processing in this moment. The third thing that we do after we acknowledge that it's not a bad thing that it's arrived is we give it permission to be heard. And it's as simple as I give these past emotions the opportunity to speak whatever truth and whatever information I need to hear right now. And when this happens, you might get some details and sometimes you won't just acknowledging their presence and giving them permission to be heard is enough for them to continue to process through. The fourth step is to give the emotions permission to be released without having to understand what they are about. Because sometimes we will be in contact with something from the past, but we don't have a full picture. It's almost like I only have three of the 10 puzzle pieces put together and I have a sense of what's there, but I don't know what's really there. 
We do not have to complete the puzzle. We do not have to see everything in order to be in a situation where we're able to release these emotions because some of the emotions are just hanging around because they're hanging around and they don't have useful information because they're from a point in our life that we're not living anymore. And so I always just say, any of the emotions that are coming up from the past have permission to be released right now without me having to understand what they are about. If they need to come back, they can, but more than likely they've served their purpose. I thank them and I let them go. The last little bit is after you do that, if you've given them permission to release without being understood, acknowledge the information that is returning and note that, and that then becomes something that you can tap on. So if a particular memory is still hanging around or a particular experience or particular relationship, take note of that. Now, the thing that we probably don't want to do is to go chasing after that thing that has come up, ignoring the issue that we started with. So when information like this comes forward for me, I note it. I'm almost always tapping with a pen and a piece of paper at my hand. Certainly if I'm at home and I'm tapping, I always have something like that at hand so that if something comes up, I can take note of it. So then I'll return to where I started. So in the case with my client, back to just what she was grieving, missing right now, after that feels cleared, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this new information from the past and I'm going to use the tools and the approach that's appropriate to deal with that. The movie technique, just tapping on it, bringing it information, however we want to release it, but it gives us a chance to let it go. So again, the five steps are really simple. Acknowledge the past emotion, step one. Step two, acknowledge that it is not bad that these past emotions have shown up. Step three, give the past emotions permission to be heard. Step four, give the emotions permission to release without having to understand them. And step five, process anything that is still hanging around that needs to be directly responded to. You will find that if you do this, you're less likely to experience the emotion that we started tapping for today. And because many of these things are no longer useful, because they are memories about a time that are so far in the past that we are not that person anymore, that we've changed so much, that clearing these past emotions are going to happen really, really quickly. And you're going to get the double bonus of clearing what we set down to tap on and clearing these emotions from the past that were just creating a small amount of drag, just pulling us down, holding us back a small bit. That will make each movement, each moment moving forward much simpler. So like I said at the beginning, a really simple, simple five-step process that you can go back and do any time that you want. I would love to hear your experience about the process. All you need to do is drop me a note, gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqna.com. Click on the link on the website. Or if you're one of the folks who've downloaded the Tapping Q&A app, there's a contact button inside of the app. You can send me a voice message or an email from inside of the app. If you haven't downloaded the app, it's free. Just search Tapping Q&A in either the Android or the Apple app stores, and you'll be able to download it to give you access to our entire back catalog, plus hundreds of tapping scripts typed out that you can tap along to. If you know someone in your life who could use what we talked about today, please be our ambassador, pass it along. Don't spam your inbox and send it to everybody in the world. But if there's someone out there who could use something like this, please pass it along. It would mean the world to me. The most common way people find a new piece of content is from the recommendation of a friend and you're going to reach people I'm never going to reach. And it's not about my reach being bigger, but it's about transformation being deeper because the healthier we all are, the better all of our lives are. Yes, that is cheesy. And I always feel cheesy when I'm saying it, but it's true. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the podcast and podcasting parlance. Subscribe is always free. It's not like Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus where you have to pay a subscription fee. It is free. All you need to do is search tapping Q and A wherever you listen to podcasts in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and everywhere you find audio. Some places the buttons will say subscribe. Some places it'll say follow. Regardless what the button says, click it so that when new episodes come out, you are notified and you get them right away. So you get access to more amazing free resources. Also, check out our entire back catalog. You know, we're closing in on 500 episodes between full episodes and bonus episodes. All of them are absolutely free. There's close to 200 hours of free tap along content interviews with amazing change work professionals and lots of instruction like this. Little tools that you can implement right away. 
questions, comments, if you have a topic you'd like us to cover, if you have people you'd like me to interview, I'm currently doing lots of interviews right now because we have lots of time for interviews that I'm going to be doling out over the course of the summer and into the fall. Again, all the ways that you can contact me, drop me the note. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrestelli. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Montrestelli Tapping Q&A. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Montrestelli and Tapping Q&A.